We'll switch it over to these player cards. Oh. Here they are. Andy versus Zex. Their win rates are matching at 71%. Zex, a little bit more experienced, has entered the, the second mystery tournament and has entered a total of 15 of all 17. He immediately won when he joined in mystery tournament two. He's made top eight six times. So is is more battle tested, but really I, I have trouble giving too much of an edge to either player. This is gonna be a really close one. When you look at uh, joined, joined and immediately won, like MT1, that's not impressive, impressive at all. Obviously someone joined MT1 and immediately won. <laughs> uh, but do you think MT2 is less impressive than say like 15 or 16 or something? A little bit, just cause it's a smaller tournament. Just, you know. Oh yeah, that's true, it, that's true. Um, and I would also say, uh, well, no, I guess it's, we have a lot of good players now, but I think it's, that's just a function of there being more people. So yeah, I go, I go, it goes back to the, the smaller player pool, I think. That's true. That makes sense. Um, we've already given them their game, so I feel like we should jump into this. We ha look how many of these we have to go over now. <laughs> yeah, like it, it's, it's crawling. Uh, I didn't see old towers though, so I'm off to a bad start. Right. Old towers? Is it so? I, I didn't see it either. But is it the game where you like, you like knock down the background and then the towers like, they it like falls? That the wasn't that for Genesis? Could be. That was a cool game, but I don't know if <laughs> it, if that's the one because I think that was an MT16. I think I know what game you're talking about, and that was a cool game. Hole in one mini golf. Not so cool a game. <laughs> that was crazy. I was not expecting like every, everything course. was fine <laughs> until the last <laughs> course, which started off with the map that was upside down for no discernible down reason. Picture of a snowman. There yeah. was no course anywhere. It was just suddenly <laughs> you were golfing on a picture, and they just got weirder from there. That was funny. It was especially. It was. <laughs> It's a lot like our, our weird Doom Wad that we made, where it's a very normal Doom Wad for half of it, and then it just goes completely off the rails at the end. Um, Stargrove Scramble was a... I get, I, got, I get that one confused with the one where there's like an orb and you teleport to the other side of the circle. It's not that one, I think. But it was some kind of puzzle platformer. Andy lost to Pika Pals, who claimed the the right to challenge for the top eight spot on winner's side, losing in House of Pegyurun, which mm. we commentated, I think, and I still don't remember. No, exactly no, this is the was. one of the Glasskeeper Glabis death. Oh, yeah. With the, like, the root level design where you had to prepare things for the solution, like, pretty far in advance. Yeah, and you couldn't corner jump, and you couldn't shoot through ladders, and, yeah, it was very, very devious. Honestly... Un being unable to corner jump is maybe a plus for a puzzle game because then you don't have like mm. if 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 you can't do any weird moves that would break the integrity of the puzzle then you don't even have to try yeah you can rule all, the, all that stuff out mm. but when you're stuck and you know a corner jump would be the solution boy can it be <laughs> frustrating with it at just out of reach you can keep trying Zex's first match was in the, the stealth Christmas game. Secret Santa delivering presents and dodging murderers. That was a convincing win for Zex. Uh, who then lost early to Jal, the racing game queen in Wangan Midnight Portable. <laughs> the racing game queen. It was her, her best genre, she said, when we interviewed her. All right. <laughs> Who doesn't want to be a racing game queen? Well, yeah, that's true. But I mean, like, if I'm if if my best skill is something, that doesn't mean I'm the best at that skill. Whatever. Okay. She beats Zex. That's true. <laughs> that's true. Um, and then Zex is one out from there, obviously, because it's still in the tournament. Uh, defeated Polari in the Veggie Tales game that we keep saying is better than you'd think a Veggie Tales game would be. Just take our word you for it. You have to say that because it's a Veggie Tales game. Yeah, and it's in Mystery Tournament. Like, if you set your expectations where you would, you would think there's no way that would ever get accepted to Mystery Tournament. But 
Trust us, it's pretty okay. And then a mini putt game for the Game Boy. You hit the ball. Both players having been mini putt tested, I guess. And then Bacon Man 12 was a really, really close match. It was a Hotline Miami style game called Last Slice. Oh, yeah. I came down to, to Paul, the final boss fight of the goal. <laughs> you even remember the name? How could I forget Paul? I only remember Charles. Yeah, have you seen that guy? I think he's long gone. Oh. <laughs> Man. Um, you gotta set a, a goal in, in, so that they can join the race. Yeah, they're. Yeah, <laughs> I almost did it. Well, I tell you about Nekoto Puzzle. Nekoto Puzzle is uh, you push blocks to make a path for a cat to go across the top. It was really hard. <laughs> it was surprisingly hard. It got very hard very quickly. It was one of those, like, really... Like, one-solution Japanese puzzle games. We were looking for, like, the one thing that will work. Yeah. And uh, Zex was pretty good in that match. Church was was not too bad, but Zex opened up a gap and then it never closed. And some of the solutions were just really, like, once you saw it, you were like, oh, yes, that's so good. But, like, you couldn't mm -hmm. even get there at all until yeah. you saw it. There was a puzzle where you had to, like, build a platform for one block to, like, shimmy across and support yep. all these little dropping down platforms. That was a beautiful solution that we did not see at all until Zex suddenly came up with it. Mm -hmm. And then it was really fun for us to put together that icicle that needs to drop down. And it's like, what? Hold on, you can't. Yeah, that that arrow <laughs> we're like, can't okay. drop, or it. We got to fit there's everything no in there. Oh no, wait, you can't. Yeah, that was what a curveball. And then like the realization of like, so it has to go around it while it's frozen in the air. Are you are you serious? Yes, yes, this is the kind of game this is. <laughs> uh, all of this makes no sense if you didn't watch the race. That's a good one to go back and watch, I guess. And then verse Relis in Scorpio Lab. <laughs> I love the name of this game. You say it like you don't know which game it is. It's a, you're a tiny little guy yeah, and that's you true. jump on things. Yeah, it's a pretty basic hardcore platformer, you know, the kind where you die pretty quickly but you also kill things pretty quickly. Mhm. Mm Innocent like game. It. Yeah. That was one of the ones from it was in contention to maybe go into top 8 of Mystery Tournament 14. Eight? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And then we were like, meh, let's go with something else. And so when when asked, like, hey, which games from Mystery Tournament 14 do you think we should put in the backup pool? I was like, give them Scorpulak. Scorp. It ends in a shmup boss fight, even. Oh, yeah, like like Gradius or something. Right to the right. Yeah. All right, we have a game. Uh, I'm, I'm going to try the vertical. The game is actually not vert vertical. It's got some UI elements but I'm curious if they're actually important, and we're going to try with this layout. Okay. Because this is the, the Tate layout. Yeah. The game is called Our Rutich. <laughs> yeah, it's a weird one. Um, so this was submitted with the goal that we thought was too short, so we lengthened it and then found out it included a bunch of stages that had random bosses. Uh, like, it was... The levels go left to right across the... the you see they're in four columns, right? So the left column is A, the second column is B, and then C, and then R. And it was like, that's weird that it goes to R. Turns out R stands for random. It's random bosses. So oh. <laughs> thankfully we caught that in testing. And so they're only doing A, B, C, and then they jump down a row, A, B, C, A, B, C. So they're going to be doing 12 stages, and it's a lot like Ikaruga. Yeah, that's what I immediately thought when they started collecting one colored things and avoiding the other ones. Yeah, so right off the bat, we're seeing not so much aggression from either player. So the big way to speed this up, right? This is a shmup that is kind of auto-scrollery, uh, but you can speed it up by being more aggressive, by having a white shield and touching white blobs or having a red shield and touching red blobs. It will send a, a bolt back at the boss. Oh, yeah, yeah, And yeah, this yeah. can end up being like the bulk of your damage, really, if you're really good about this. Yeah, like collecting all of these like spread shots that the boss is doing. 
Yeah, and the closer you are, the easier it is to collect a whole bunch of things, but obviously you've got to be reacting faster, so there's a lot of risk-reward going on. Oh, risk-reward. That's like... Mystery Tournament. Zero plus zero equals zero. I can confirm that math was correct. <laughs> you also need to make sure not to die. And dying is going to lose you time. The big, the big, big, big time loss is if you game over. You've got five lives, I think, and you earn more. Those, those are cut off on our layout, by the way. Yeah, oh, so awesome. I can show like a little bit. Like, this is what <laughs> it, it looks like. Left two, I yeah. guess. Yes. No, it's left three. So earning more score will get you a couple more lives. If they come close to game over, maybe we switch to the other layout. But right now, I like this. It's big. Okay. Um, bit more yeah, I didn't come like close until later on. It started to get harder. Um, but the difficulty is pretty smooth. I don't expect there to be really any big jumps in difficulty. But it will be interesting to see if the players decide to get more aggressive as they get more comfortable with the game. Already, I feel like I saw Andy higher up on the screen. Zex as well, pretty high up. Uh, is it always bosses only? Yeah. Boss, 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 boss. Go, it's, go, go. It's a little bit like um, warning forever. That's it. Warning forever. It's it's a shoot 'em up like this, and there's a boss, and then the way you kill the boss makes it evolve in a way that it makes it harder to kill it in that way. Like oh, if if, <laughs> if you if you always shoot the left cannon and then kill the boss because the left is free, it will grow another cannon on the left. Wow. Okay. Something that like that. Neat. Yeah. So, unfortunately, all of the bosses are just like a weird collection of polygons you can't really <laughs> make out. And all of their attacks are all using the same colors and roughly the same shape. So, it's going to be very difficult for us to tell every now and then who is in the lead. Yeah, at may a glance. maybe we should switch to the other layout because it uh, there there is like it says one A and then the boss number. So Zex just switched to five, and you switch to four. Well, it's still on yeah. four. L let's try the other layout just so we can see. Them. They're close enough that I'm recognizing some of the boss patterns, but if they get further apart, it's it's gonna start to get harder. So it, I actually ended up like I had enough resources left over that I was like making guesses basically as to like. All right, he just shot a bunch of red stuff on this side. I think he's going to switch to white next. And so I would switch to white and stay right in front of it and hope to just send a bunch of stuff back at him, right? You can start to take those risks when you have all those extra lives. Second, go here for a bit. <laughs> and here so we go. go. Tilt your head to the left, you can make out what their score is. That's less important. You should tilt your head to, tilt your head to the right, and you will see that they're on 1A5, and left 5 is the number of lives they have left. Well, Zex is not on 1A anymore. Moving on to 1B, that's 1 12th of the goal complete. The weird B. <laughs> Why is it disjointed on one side? That's not like a thing Bs do. Yeah. You're like, how do I make it different from 8? I don't know, just mess up one of the sides. Yeah, so Zex is like 10 seconds ahead, which is only 10 seconds, but it is kind of auto scrollery. So any time gained, as long as you don't die, is like a permanent time gain. Yeah, there is kind of something kind of scary about having this game as a mystery race, and that's uh, whenever bosses die, you need to press a button to make the score count up thingy go away faster. And that could be like a silent killer that just ruins your whole race if you're not doing it and your opponent is mm -hmm. so it's in the pace bin i think it's bold in the pace bin to you know to really decrease the chances that it decides a race but you know it is a thing and i have i have not been paying attention to see what they've been pressing I get this aggression from zex way up in front of the boss yeah, they're doing a good job with the color switching as well oh andy dies to some random projectile way at the bottom of the screen What I also really like about putting this in here is that 
these are two mystery tournament veterans veterans but how many shmups do you play in mystery tournament right yeah i'm not good at shmups yeah but we're I, testing something new here would be a curveball for me Every bus has like two bases. Sometimes they explode and something happens, but the number doesn't go up. Yes, sometimes they have. There's a. I think there's like a health bar at the top. Yeah, Andy's. You can huh. see the health bar. Sex is just filled up. Oh, and then at 70, 17,000, the bus goes mad. Yeah, something like that. I'm trying to talk like to Sexes judge. play a lot. Yeah, yeah, but I find it hard to judge where our hitbox actually is. It's, uh, I think it's right in the middle of the ship. There's like a, hmm, it's kind of hard to, there. It's easier when you're on the red shield. You can see a brighter spot in the very middle. Oh, so it's like the absorbing has a bigger hitbox than the hurt box? Yes. Ah. So if you're clever with your switching... Oh, you can just it, keep switching? You can get, you could survive in a field of everything. You could... It does completely disappear for a little bit and then come back. So during that time, you know, you're vulnerable. But oh. yeah, rapid switching and careful movement can let you survive really just about anything in this game. Yeah, look at Andy. Andy isn't switching. There we go. But I feel like Sex is doing a way better job at managing color aspect. Yeah, and is, is up in front of the boss, so is absorbing more shots, mm -hmm. whereas Andy is playing more defensively down at the bottom. And it's being reflected in the times here. Yeah, I'm actually curious how much damage the weapon... Yeah, look at this. Collecting the stuff does like twice as much damage as just shooting at the bus. Like, mm -hmm. in addition to shoot, like, you end up with about three times as fast. Yeah, it's a big deal. Also, look, it's but six. it is... It's so much harder, right? Like Andy just took a death there to like a not too many things even on the screen. Uh, Andy's just retreating further and further back to the bottom of the screen. Whereas Zex, I feel like, is always looking for a path to move forwards through a single color, you know? Yeah, try to, like, path it out so that you collect a bunch of white projectiles, and then now, now there's more red, so how about I path some red? I'm really comfortable to staying one color and going in between two of the other that are pretty close together, really trusting the ship's hitbox. Look at that. Messy pattern, but Zeg survives. Andy hunting down these projectiles that are going wide. That's what you want to be doing. It's tricky, though, because sometimes you do that that and it pulls you away from the front of the boss and you then you miss the opportunity to reflect like a shotgun spread that comes out from the middle it spreads out before you get a chance to get to it and then you don't get to get them all at once for free so there, there's like an opportunity cost for moving away from the boss yeah i like this i feel like shmups is kind of a Usually in genre that doesn't work for mystery tournament, but this risk reward thing that you mentioned, that's what makes a good mystery game. Mm -hmm. What I'm kind of curious about is, you know, if they don't have much experience with this kind of thing, like I almost feel like I'm, I've seen, I'm seeing improvement from Andy. Yeah, I think right now he's playing pretty good. Yeah. Like compared to like ten minutes ago, I'm seeing like a pretty a pretty marked difference. I mean, he's he's keeping up. He's less than the bus behind, <laughs> which doesn't sound <laughs> a that lot great. of movement. <laughs> wow, there's a bunch of clustered things here, but Zex is is getting a little scared. 
has five lives, but is is opting to go defensive here at the end of the boss fight. Usually when you say, oh, he's less than the boss behind in a mystery race, that's usually really bad. <laughs> this one, it's not so bad. Yeah, you kill one boss, there's another boss. Yeah, but like imagine like like Adventure Island, boss behind OJ. Yeah, that's a whole world. Some <laughs> mystery goals end with the first boss you encounter, and then that's it. You beat the goal. Yeah, Paul was the second boss one. Mm -hmm. The other one was like a a big carrot or something. What was it? Wasn't it a pizza? It's probably a pizza. Or a hamburger. No, Paul was the hamburger. Paul I think was the hamburger head. Well... <laughs> So this is 1c5 for Zex, 1c4, now 5 for Andy, so 80% of a boss behind. You did say that it doesn't really ramp up in difficulty all that much. But you don't think we're going to see a game over? Maybe when they start to get to World 3, World 4. Hmm. It, it does increase. It just doesn't spike. It's just a very smooth curve. If you jump down to like the bottom world or whatever, it gets pretty spicy. I couldn't do it on my first try the way that I did all these other bosses. It's crazy how these bosses are just random polygon. <laughs> It's so bright and glowing too that like they all overlap and you can't even really make out what it was supposed to be even. This is so mean. There's one color mixed in with all the other ones. Zex skirts by with the shield just grabbing the edge of it to go overlapping all those hitboxes. Yeah, that's really good. Tons of damage from Andy grabbing all these projectiles. Yeah, it doesn't matter how much Andy improves if Zex just keeps playing like this. It's just really well done on us collecting so many bullets. Yeah, it is... It is the kind of race where... It's, um... It's it's not easy to, like, outplay your opponent once you get going. Like, you, you come in with, like, a certain set of skills, and your opponent comes in with a certain set of skills... And the, if there's a difference there, it's really hard to, for something to happen to make up for that difference. In this case, it might not even be that. In this case, it might just be Zex was more comfortable being aggressive early and came out to a lead that way. <laughs> See what the game, what the basement says about like damage priority. Mm, it does say it kills it faster. It doesn't really say, oh, like this is super important, which is fine. Like the basement to go into so much detail. So, so maybe it is a thing where Zex quickly realized how much more damage collecting bullets. is dying in sync, but Zex one whole boss ahead at this point. Sometimes I'm like not sure which way the score is supposed to go. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah. Andy's score is going all over the place. Now there's an L in there. <laughs> <laughs> Zex is scooping up as many of these as switching, but can't switch fast enough as the bullets are coming, so every now and then skips a sort of a wave. Andy, Andy dove in pretty close on that one there. Yeah, worked out. I really uh, like it. As I watch them play, I'm I find myself making decisions about like I would go this direction now <laughs> or switch to this color or whatever, right? And often I see Zex doing the same thing I'm thinking. 
Oh, what that means, I can't tell you. Like, yeah, I don't yeah. know if I'm good or bad or what. But <laughs> like the implication, oh, that's that he's doing the right thing. Yeah, <laughs> which is like that's really bad for him. He's doomed. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like <laughs> why would you do that? <laughs> That post went down really fast for Zex. Yeah, that was the first boss of this set of five, so... Oh, so every... Maybe. There's like a curve Maybe. in every level as well. Ooh, an early death from Zex. Got really aggressive right on top of the spawning, was counting on it being a certain color. It switched colors. So it drops down to two lives early on. Oh, um, another one. It also removes one life all the left. bullets. Yeah, Ooh. it does, which Ooh. is, like, good for safety, but you don't get any damage. Oh, yeah, I, I did mean it in a negative way, but you're right. It, it could be positive. All right, killing so the boss. The kill. Is that enough score for a life? Yes, it is. So far, I've seen the life always go up. Oh, maybe it's just me. Maybe it's not score. Yeah, that's what I was just... thinking, but then that score, and I'm like, oh, yeah, that makes sense as well. Well, I mean, I played this game once for 40 minutes, and I don't know. There's a lot going on, you know? Like <laughs> <laughs> overlapping the boss. Well, the boss doesn't have a hitbox, but obviously if a bullet spawns are, that's a problem. Yeah. But if it's a whole bunch of bullets and you're Ooh. the correct color, that's not a problem at all, is it? Not the death was X. It's going to clear this one. boss, probably. Yeah, there we go. But for this whole set of five bosses, you have this this one set of lives. Oh, didn't get a life to work with. Oh yeah, okay, it is score. That makes sense. Usually the first extend is cheaper than the following ones, right? I think that's generally how. It that's goes. how it is in arcade games, yeah. So we're seeing some tricky stuff. These ones come out red and then turn white and then turn red and then turn white. Oh, no, oh, I what? think that was the second set that came out, but. Yeah, and they're they're not even like a different shape or anything to let you know they're gonna change. They just change. So yeah. <laughs> good luck. Uh, Andy has four lives. Can afford to be way more aggressive than Zex right now. Yeah. If I was Zex, I would be scared. But this boss is surely going to give enough score for another life, right? There we go. Okay. This one doesn't have a lot of HP. A little concerned overall though because i i did lose a couple lives and you know had to be a little safer but it was li much later on some of the some of the last few levels was where i started to worry about that both players have already been sort of pushed to the edge a little bit early mm -hmm. on so maybe bullets, they'll be tested i switch whoa oh my god <laughs> the bus like transformed into his final face just before that. Tell me this to find path through. Andy just killed 2B4. Zex just about to kill 2B5. So still one boss apart. Yeah, but Zex was a little more than a boss. Yeah, but I think the bosses take a different amount of time sometimes. Oh, do you start with two lives? I thought you started with three. I do think you started too. We did, I did see two first when we were talking about it. Okay. But I think it's always been. Zex starts every boss phase down at the bottom of the screen here, like this. It's an intention to go to be here at the start and eye things up rather than be at the front and be ready to pounce on whatever projectiles come out. So much stuff. Ooh. Gets up into that cloud, the, those circles, before they have a chance to spread. Good stuff. Nice movement from Andy, sweeping across a ring of whites rather than diving into the sort of streaks of red and gets the damage he needs to end the, the, the boss. Or the phase of the boss, anyway. Let's take a death, though. That gets it right back. He's missing some of these waves. Sex did a good job of keeping on top of those. Oh, surprise red catches Zex, trying to gobble up all those whites.
I didn't like the ones that changed colors. Like, I would be scared <laughs> if I see that starting to happen. Generally, it will happen soon. Um, if you're being really aggressive way at the top of the screen, it could definitely be a problem. But if you're even on mid-screen, it'll change before it's a problem. But you're right, they don't they don't know that, you know? Eventually I feel like you get a feel for that. But it, it hasn't shown, it hasn't tipped its hand too much on it. Is Zex a Toho fan? I wouldn't be surprised. Unless it's Andy who's the Toho fan. Maybe I'm the Toho. Didn't even... We got still basically a boss lead. The life bars are pretty comparable. Yeah, and I mean, we're not even halfway through the goal. But there's still a lot of room to catch up for Andy. Yeah, I was wondering, like, you know, how, what, what kind of difference are we really going to see? Uh, and then Jorf beat me by, like, five minutes or something <laughs> when what? we played. You didn't this like, game oh. over? Uh, no. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I did, for, like, the first world or two, I wasn't pressing the button to skip the score, though. That was a, that was a factor. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it's possible to be a lot better. It's playing so well right now. Andy showing some hesitance to switch colors to get more damage. There we go, that's good stuff. Yeah. Switch with the red, switch to white. He's like this stream of hope. Getting kind of messy for Zex. Pushed all the way back to the bottom of the screen. All right, Andy's starting 3A. This is halfway through the goal. Zex already on here a, a little bit. Well, it loses that life. He's probably going to get another one back here, though. Nope. Nope. I think you do have the zero, although I think I'm just guessing. I don't think I know for sure. Zex sees all those reds, goes in, it's enough to end the phase. gonna do crisscrossing colors was having a lot of trouble backed all the way up you're realizing when like a batch of bullets is gonna end the face could be important too it's like uh in super metroid when they do this well at the end of the phantom fight yeah the boss is gonna enrage so you just do enough to kill him and it doesn't matter yeah Like, I will definitely die if I do this, but if he dies first, yeah. <laughs> Zex is trying to switch and get every single one, but they're way too tight for that to be a thing. It's hard, it's hard for me to find criticism in what Zex is doing. And he is pulling further and further. That's is on 3-5 as Andy starts 3-4. Mm -hmm. Depending on how long 4 takes. Maybe actually not pulling a hat that much. Yeah, credit to Andy. Had that, that slow start, but has, has really kind of settled in and started to figure things out.
I think where the players really get tested is things like this, where Zex is just facing two waves of both colors. That's where I would just be purely defensive. I would switch when things got close and were dangerous. I was much less concerned with trying to find the most damage. 3B has begun. Andy about to start facing some of those waves we saw Zex dealing with. First boss of 3B down. Andy onto the last phase. This is the one I was talking about. Kind of a mess of colors coming from both sides. Maybe. Yeah, Andy pushed way down to the bottom. Maybe if you have a lot of lives, you can gamble on which color of shots come out of which side. Uh-huh. Andy oh. does not have a lot of lives. Yeah. Holds on with the one to get the clear. done with two but one i was about to say is like two bosses ahead but this first one dies really fast yeah it, it's hard done. to tell how how big the difference is just based on which bus they're on bullets like, are getting faster now look at this on zex's side sometimes i would want to switch very quickly so i would like switch, 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 and I would hit the button too soon, so I wouldn't switch, because I was still in the process of switching. So I would think I was red when I was white, and then I was white when I was red, and it, <laughs> I would still sometimes not die, <laughs> just because I was switching fast enough and like avoiding everything. But it can be tricky that way sometimes, being keeping track of <laughs> what color you even are if you're looking at projectiles and not your ship. By the way, this music, not a fan. <laughs> like it's the, the bosses... fine, it's just that it's it's like the only song or whatever. Whoa. Here we go. Um, like the bosses are randomly generated, maybe the music randomly generated. <laughs> That's pretty mean. I th I like the music as like a if it was like a little bit and then it went somewhere else or something but it, it just kind of stays here the whole time i'm not a fan of whatever this like dog barking horn honking sound is whatever that sound all right andy starting 3b4 sex halfway through 3b5 Maybe starting to pull ahead a little bit, even further. Phase ends. A lot of opportunity for red on the right side. Zex jumps on it, but there's a bit of white mixed in, so that's a death, but has plenty more and doesn't need him. And Zex is kind of uncomfortable right now. Probably about a minute. game lagging for Andy. I wonder. Um, it does, it does, it got busy enough for me that sometimes it would lag. Um, which is, which got me worried about, you know, would it be a fair race or whatever, but like, I, I usually shmups are designed like with lag in mind. Like the lag makes it slower so you can react more to the patterns and It's like a game mechanic, really. I remember someone so, and Just Cause 2 came out and it didn't run well on console. Some guy said to me like, oh, actually, I like it that way. When I blow stuff up and the game slows down, that's really cool, like a slow motion. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, dude, sure. 
I get where he's coming from. <laughs> it does really sound like someone who paid sixty dollars for a game and <laughs> doesn't want to admit that maybe it's got a problem though. Oh, Zex going right on top of the spawner to get a bunch of stuff and it all pays off. Bunch of extra lives racked up for Zex too now, sitting on five. Zex is playing really well. Just not that much to it. Yeah. Other than that. And this is 3C. We're really into the later stages now. It's not going to get too much harder than what we're seeing. And if this is not enough to stop Zex, then it's looking more and more grim for Andy. Yeah, here's the slowdown. Yeah. It's kind of fun that you feel like you're seeing the Matrix or whatever a little bit. <laughs> oh, Andy, a little bit inaccurate, wanted to jump through that wave of, of whites, and there was one red mixed in. Big opportunity for Zex, but now that all the waves have gotten tangled. It's, it's always doing a really good job of switching color when, like, the opportunity to collect the other color presents itself. Mm hmm. And sometimes, like, not switching color. Sometimes I see a thing that could work, but Zex stays red and goes a different way and grabs these ones, then switches and, and sweeps back when, and gets those ones I was looking at earlier. And then after he does it, I think, no, that was probably better. Yeah. All right, final set of, of three levels now. We're on to world four. Andy with two lives left, heading into the last boss of 3C. What's up with the number on the very left? I mean, like, it's at 10 when nothing crazy is happening, but then once the boss starts shooting, it's like going up. Like, number of projectiles, but see? Is it something like your attack fires, like, like gets higher and higher and higher, and then you charge it up to a max damage of a thousand or something? Or is it consecutive? Staying in the same color, does it change when you switch? It goes back when the bus dies, when you're not in color. No, it doesn't go back when you switch. It's like that uh, other freeware Japanese game where <laughs> once the players had like the debug information on screen, we were trying to figure oh, yeah. out what some of the numbers meant. I don't know what this number means. DPS of your laser score counter, score multiplier. Score multiplier would make sense next to the score, but what makes it go up or down? Whoa, look at this attack from Andy. Big chunky waves that are falling straight down. Pushed Andy all the way to the bottom. Is on the, f just beat the first boss yeah. of uh, 4B actually, has jumped ahead to 4B instead of 4A, I think. Oh yeah, that's weird. So we'll need to go back and do that. Um, but purpose. zero zero lives though. Like this is not a good start. Oh yeah. Oh, you know what? I said I didn't game over. Now that I think about it, there was one time where I died on the first boss. And like screw it and took a dive. Andy game over on the second boss of 4B. Yeah, that was not intentional. I think Andy wanted to try to clutch that one out and just didn't. So that is a really big time loss. That's the big thing. That's kind of what we were thinking maybe would happen sometimes to the players. Yeah. Yeah, but meanwhile, Zex is trucking along three lives on the fourth boss of 4A already. Yeah. It's not I'm looking not... like Zex is going to game over. We're seeing the world four bosses are a little bit meaner. They look the same. These so. shots are faster, the colors oh, yeah, are a little I more mean, mixed. I mean the boss. 
Oh, yeah, the, no, he, has, he doesn't have, like, an angry face on or anything. He looks <laughs> yeah. very much just the same collection of yellowish polygons. This one's like uh, facey, which, which which is kind of good, right? Like you want yeah. the bullets to come to you. What? Well, tricky color changes. Right. I think Zex died there. I oh, mean, you. But it, it like launches red and yellow uh, and red and white at you at the same time. Could probably bait them in such a way that they like separate into colors on their own. Yeah, I wonder. All right, here's 4B. This is the one that was a trouble for Andy. Let's see how Zex does. Right at the top of the screen, the spirals are caving in on themselves and then coming back out. There's some toes. Cool. No deaths on boss one. Andy down to one life, moving on to the fourth boss. I don't know how Zex is supporting these. <laughs> His hitbox is very small, and he is being very careful. Oh, Zex really wanted to be in the middle of that spiral. <laughs> well, the fun is I want to be there. Oh, nice dodges from Andy getting in between some red projectiles. He's on one life. He really needed to stay alive here. Yeah, another game over, and the race is like super old. Sex with the death. Three lives left on the third boss of this set. Yeah, third boss isn't too far. You don't want to be low on lives on this guy. Oh, Andy, another death. Zero lives. Oh no. Two bosses left. Oof. Well, one boss left. Kind of close. So many shots. Where's the switch? There it is. Oh. Yeah, there was reds underneath. The whites were so dense, it was hard to see the reds underneath. Oh, another death. One life left. This is still the third boss. This is starting to get kind of spicy. Maybe slow down here because the boss is almost dead, yeah. Andy going behind the boss out of desperation with zero lives left. The final one. The health is half down. Andy really cannot die here. All right, here comes the enrage mode. Oh, it's, it's doing this attack. It's kind of dangerous. Tricky waves Whoa. pushing Zex to the bottom. Narrowly really avoids those rats. And rich. And oh my god. Clutches it out. It's dangerous. Sex with a lot of reds on screen. Oh, there's two waves overlapping. Yeah. Finds a gap between them. It was precarious. Zero lives left. Zex has two bosses left in this set, and there's a lot of colors all over the place, way at the bottom of the screen. The right side is very oh, red. Oh, my, oh up, my god. And then retreats. Oh my god, that was so close. Well done. Andy has seen a little bit of 4B already, and has still lost a life very early on. Sex earns an extra life for the final boss of 4B. There's only 4C left after this. That's the end of the goal. This whole time I was thinking, where have I seen this mechanic where, like, hurting you is a smaller hitbox than the good thing? <laughs> it's from Beat Saber. You're, you're more likely to hit a block in a good way than in a bad way. Oh. <laughs> like this whole time I was thinking, which game was that? <laughs> I was like, it's like Ikaruga. <laughs> we did have Ikaruga in co-op tourney. That's pretty oh, interesting. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was a score That's attack kind of mode. There's uh, some pretty good videos of one guy controlling both ships Ooh. in Ikaruga. Yeah, that's crazy. It's almost like a dance. Andy, like, yeah. earn some lives here on 4B. Up to three now. It's... Zex clutches it out with zero lives left, is moving on to 4C. 
Yeah, this is the final level of the bill. This boss is pretty easy. I don't know, those shots were shooting other shots. <laughs> That's kind of messed up. Well, but they only sh they, they shoot the same color. Like, I think the hard part of this game is when different colors overlap like this. They're going so slow, Zex is able to switch and yeah. just stay inside the field. Yeah, that, that's probably an important thing to recognize as well. Andy with two lives left, 4b3. Just needs a game over at this point. No amount of good play is going to catch Zex at this point. I mean, maybe if Andy collects every single bullet. I don't know if even that's enough <laughs> at this point. <laughs> you can imagine trying to catch those bullets before they go off the top of the screen. <laughs> you would just need to be on top of the spawn points, yeah. guessing correctly every time. Just coin flips after coin flips. And, and like, you can't be on both spawn points. I don't think it's, it's <laughs> fast possible. Zex with a ton of lives on 4C3 already. And Andy with a death down to zero on 4B4 again is in this do or die situation. One boss left. Zex with so many lives is poised to move on to the top eight deciding match. Oh yeah, this is not a qualifying match. It's just match before the qualifying match. Yeah. Last one we have. The, the way the, the hit and hurt box work also reminds me of like a, a game design concept which says that if in doubt, decide in favor of the player. Mm -hmm. you, you can see it in games like Celeste, which has a lot of like assist stuff, like if you barely make it... If you barely not make it on top of a platform, they're still gonna put you on the platform, because uh, it just feels good to make the jump, right? And in, mm -hmm. in this case, th there's a lot of these things where, yeah, you're collecting bullets and not dying. That feels good. Yeah. You have this gigantic shield relative to your tiny little hitbox to reflect these shots. Yeah. All right, boss four done. This is the last boss of the entire goal. And Zex has six lives. The odds of a game over here. I mean, I don't want to jinx anything, but boy, does it look good for Zex. This boss so far not very hard. It's, it's not Zex is comfortable, overlap. really pushing. I mean, I mean, Zex doesn't know that he's got this big lead, right? For all he knows, he's neck and neck the whole race. Yeah. And... Being aggressive is going to decide it. He has to make use of his lives. Like, play dangerously right now is, is way to go a little bit faster. Mm -hmm. Just it. really smart usage of the shields and the colors on the final phase. 44-27 is the time from Zex. Andy was three bosses behind at the end of the day. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be the five minutes that we're between the testers, but it's still going to be quite a lot. Yeah, the test times, because we all did slightly different goals, <laughs> they're all a little... Oh, with like the weird. R levels and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Zex did phenomenal. I mean, so, like, game over is obviously huge, right? But even just dying and losing those bullets on the screen and then having to wait for more to show up, that's also going to eat into a bunch of your time. Zex barely died at all. A lot of lives left. Yeah, it looks like 4C is both players having an easier time dealing with this than, than B or A. Oh, 
a, a death, but not too hurtful. I think when things get really busy, Andy prefers to stay one color and just focus on dodging the other color. The fact that you collect bullets much easier than you get hurt makes me wonder if that's the right decision, right? Like if you switch, you you have like this this bubble around you that is safe because you've just collected the bullets of one color and now collect the other color. Yeah, except for that transition period where you have nothing collecting anything. Yeah, but it's, it's pretty short. As long as it's the bullets don't short. go too fast. For the most part, I think I agree with you. But I also, as someone who easily gets overloaded cognitively, understand the need to lessen that rather than intensify it by, you know, let's switch more, let's pay attention to more things. Oh, ignoring those whites. But finds the kill. The dot done. Three minutes apart. A pretty good race. Overall, Zex with an early lead and then built on it slowly. And has joined us in the voice call. This is maybe the first time, I think. Hello. I haven't heard you yet. I might need to go make sure Discord knows what your input device is. So Andy's been willing to talk to us after his matches, but this is the one that has eliminated him from Mystery Tournament, and sometimes people are a lot less happy to chat after that happens. Hello? Hello! We do have Andy joining us as well. Hello. <clears throat> Hello to both of you. Congratulations. You got a shmup in Mystery Tournament. Uh, yeah, it's like the third shmup I've ever played. Uh huh. How uh, about we heard you were a fan of of Toho Zex? Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, I'm not uh like a hardcore player, but I played most of the games. So there's like, gosh, how many of them are there? goes up to like 12.8 and beyond or something, so, uh, right? There's 18. <laughs> yeah, so the, that's 16 more than Andy, it sounds like. <laughs> um, so this was, uh, have either of you played Ikaruga specifically? Because this is sort of very modeled after that. Uh, I have not, uh, surprisingly. <laughs> uh, I've tried it. Uh, I like third stage mm -hmm. so uh, just a but, little bit yeah so it was an uh, early that... lead for Zex you had you seemed more comfortable being aggressive early on it uh well I, I didn't start taking hits uh, until uh like halfway and I was close to having to reset a few stages so uh, considering Andy didn't finish too far behind it would have been like who knows yeah, I think, Andy, you, you game over it only the once, right? Yeah, on 4B, uh, I wasn't ready for the bullets to go back up after they went down. <laughs> and I uh, was extremely caught off guard. Uh, and so I, I, like, mismenued and went to 4B before 4A. And so I died there, like, pretty quickly. I don't think it was that long. Uh, 
but I was like, yeah, we're, <laughs> we'll save that for like five minutes in the future, me. Let's, let's do 4A instead. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that was just all of World 4 was a struggle bus for me, I think. I think I went into all of the fifth bosses, except for one maybe with no lives. And I was just like, I swear to God, if I game over. <laughs> uh, what's the like slow down uh, with tons of bullets happen to you? Yeah, that happened to me too. Um, yeah, I was slightly concerned that I, I thought it was but... maybe because I made my window bigger. Um, uh -huh. So I was like, man, I hope that's not Might it. Might be I'm just intentional. Like <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I don't think I learned how to be aggressive for like maybe the first world, I think. And then I was like, okay, I should probably try to like read these patterns in some capacity. And uh, I don't know. I feel like I played pretty well, though, considering I don't play Toho very much. Yeah, I was I, I was wondering like maybe you haven't played many. I haven't played many either. Um, so I, I feel, felt like I saw you get noticeably better throughout the first like twenty minutes of the race or something. There was a little bit of like evolution happening. <laughs> so that was cool. I also really enjoyed the no menu music into absolute ear blasts music uh <laughs> um that was good um but yeah ggs zax this was, a, this was a lot of fun i enjoyed this a lot it's very different from stuff i've played so it was it was interesting to like try to learn as i played i guess honestly uh as i get older i got the much worse at like uh, Toho and all that, but uh, the hitboxes in this were so tiny. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, you could really dive between the projectiles. Both of you had some some pretty good moves, making use of that tiny little hitbox. Well, you you really liked this game, and I'm glad because um, you never you know you put a game in sometimes that's different, and it's not what people expect, and sometimes you know that can be a a good thing or a bad thing. So I'm glad it was well received. Um, but I want to ask you specifically: you came back to Mystery Tournament after kind of a long time, and you went you went pretty far. Uh, what do you think about your your run through 17 overall? Uh, you know, I can't be too upset about it. Um, I enjoyed most of the games I played. Um, so that's always a plus. Uh, there's usually one or two where I'm like, God, this game sucked so bad. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, this was a lot of fun. Um, I enjoyed it. I, <laughs> some of my, uh, my, uh, my pals have been watching and they're like, oh, dude, you gotta let me know when the next tournament sign up is. Ooh. So, uh, so we'll have some some fresh meat for the next one. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. And Zex, you've made top eight plenty of times before in your long history. You might do it again. You have one match left versus Draconic Dawn. Uh, yeah. Uh... I know. There's no, like, like I'm gonna try to win, right? Like, of course. <laughs> yeah. For, uh, uh, another Andy is in the loser bracket, so. Uh, but I'll try my best. That's funny. Most players are like, "Oh man, I really hope I make top eight. And Zex is already thinking about not the one that gets him into top eight. And not even the the top eight match itself, or the next one. He's thinking of the next, next, next match where he might face Andy. That's really that's really positive thinking. But I, I mean, when you make top eight that many times, I guess you're just so used to it. <laughs> that's that's where your head is at. That's awesome. Yeah, I knew this was going to be a tough one. Uh, Zex, I guess I, like I have a pretty okay mystery record as well, but like. 
you, you hate seeing these matchups uh, outside of top eight. Uh. <laughs> yeah, well, that's this is the, what it the way it is now. There's like yeah. 20 people who are like the top eight players now, and they can't all go in, right? So sparks fly a little bit early. By the way, we have these player cards that pull up some stats and stuff before the race. You have the same win rate, you two, 71%. Wow, that's really cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, when I, like, the first race, I, like, opened up the restream right before we started, and I saw the little cards, and I was like, I wouldn't really that high. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're both real good at this, and you put on a good show. So thank you so much for coming out and racing and being a part of this and for coming to talk to us. Yeah, thanks for commentating. Uh, appreciate it. GG Zex, good luck. Don't don't uh, don't let me down. It's you, you got to win this for me now. Thanks. That's going to do it, I guess, for our broadcast. Long gone are the days where we would string together a whole bunch of matches. There are very few left in this tournament. I guess it's it's just the four top eight deciding matches. We've got the Whitley versus our very own Maurice. Right. Draconic Dawn versus our very own Zex. We've got the Gons and Jackazam facing off to be their, their whoever wins will be their first top eight appearance. And then Andy versus Lightning to be the last four players to join someone 325 Triscorp Adam Numbers and Pika Pals in Mystery Tournament 17 Top 8. You can see on the schedule there, down at the bottom, the best versus the rest. That's our Top 8 event. It's March 11th in the afternoonish Eastern Time. I Maybe 1pm. I should really <laughs> ask ID already. I keep forgetting. Like, every time we're like, oh, I think it's at 1pm, I should ask. I should actually ask. <laughs> should do it right now, even. Okay, uh, okay. And all of you should mark your calendars because it's going to be a blast. Uh, you can come, of course, uh, tomorrow, I guess. You're racing You're racing the Whitley. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I hope. And then in three days on the weekend, it's the Mystery Show. This is a new show. Well, it's the return of an old show uh, hosted by Blasphemous Roar and Shrambles. They've been working hard on creating a ton of unique challenges and stuff. So it'll be really interesting to see what they've got in store. That'll be on the weekend, 4 p.m. Eastern time. Definitely check it out. Um, and Mystery Fun Fest is a really big community celebration. We do tons and tons of different games and events that you can play with your teammates. Everyone gets split into two teams. Bring your friends. You'll all get teamed up together. Super cool, fun event. Going to be happening um, mostly through April. It's kind of our follow-up to Mystery Tournament in a lot of ways. So, yeah, never never been a better time to get involved with this whole thing. It's been a blast. I'm Mythical9. Maurice, thanks for hanging out with me. Yeah, thank you very much for volunteering. That's going to do it. Thank you once again, everyone, for watching. We'll see you next time on the Mystery Funhouse.